Breaking news at 10 o'clock tonight, a confirmed tornado in Point Place. Reports of more tornadoes, damage across Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan, power out for thousands of people, and now the cleanup begins. We've had multiple tornadoes touch down and hailstorms as well. We're in the clear right now. All the danger is past. We have team coverage for you tonight. Chris Vickers and Matt Willoughby are hard at work in the Weather Center. Tatiana Cash and Chase Bachman are out in Washington Township and Oregon. Right now, let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Chris Vickers. Chris, it was so quiet about 6 o'clock, oh and then it just went off the rail. It really did. Several hours of really tense moments there, and we are happy to be there long to get you through it. We are all severe clear at this point, which means no additional severe weather going to be expected. But let's rewind the clock just a bit toward the afternoon. And we had some really powerful storms that came rolling through the area, especially southern Michigan, right along our lakeshore areas. And where we stand right now, while we are clear of any active severe weather, some really torrential rainfall that came through the area, flash flood Morning still in effect for Erie and Huron County. And if you check this out, that's till 1:30 a.m. We still have uh, indications that flash flooding may be occurring with some areas up to five inches of rainfall. And in around Norwalk, really incredibly heavy amounts of rainfall. Here in the Toledo Metro, we got hammered with a heavy storm right over there toward Shoreland Point Place area along the Lake Erie shore. We've had significant damage that you're going to see live reports of all evening tonight. Uh, confirmation of tornadoes and baseball-sized hail reported in and around Point place some of the largest hail that we've seen in the better part of a decade or more. Numerous reports continue to roll in and will continue to roll in through the course of tonight and into tomorrow. Add to that, we've got thousands of county uh, customers without power, including Lucas County, Ottawa County, Sandusky County, and more. And we're going to have a full wrap up of the storm coverage and what to expect going forward into the upcoming weekend in your full 10 day forecast in just a little bit. Dan, right back over to you. Chris, thank you. Now, right now, we want to get to Tatiana Cash out in Washington Township because the storms moved across the state line from Michigan into Ohio and first hit Point Place and all the way across to the lake and then went across the river uh, into Oregon. Tatiana, what do you know? Well, Dan, what I can tell you is when I spoke with Toledo Fire here at the Washington Township Fire Department, because here is where we actually have the control center when it comes to media and conversation in terms of what exactly happened. They do know that they said reports again, just like Chris had said, around 615 is when they believe the incident really came into uh, Ottawa River Road and Souter. That's where they said that actually that's the worst of it hit here in the area. And then when I spoke with people about what exactly was going on, a lot of people were just kind of dazed. They were shocked because of people who were actually actually in the incident, actually in the tornado itself. I spoke to a woman who tells me that she was just driving her car, had just cut on a, a suntan appointment, and then all of a sudden she's in her vehicle, headed to see her parents, and the tornado happens. And the tornado was happening around her. She was actually right next to ProMedica when that building collapsed. She said she could not imagine seeing all those bricks flying in all those different places. I actually spoke with the phlebotomist who works at ProMedica. He said he had just closed down and headed home when he heard the news, looked on to the social media apps, and realized, oh goodness, his building had collapsed. And then when speaking with Toledo Fire today, they they're asking that folks please stay safe. If you do not have to be out on the roads, please don't stay inside. Just kind of wait this out because the more traffic on the road, the harder it is for first responders to kind of get out and check to make sure everyone else is okay. And we do have some sound from him. I'll let you him speak about what exactly else you should do in terms of safety. The best thing that people can do right now is, is if your residence is safe, stay home. Do not come out. Uh, don't get on the roads. We are uh, the roads are starting to lighten up a little bit initially in this, but in, a, in something like this, people want to come out and see, and, and that's understandable to make sure loved ones are okay, wh whatever the motivation is. But right now, we need to be able to get into these areas the best we can. Now, again, so the suggestion is to stay home and folks, as we had mentioned earlier, are without power, so they're not likely getting this message. If you are concerned about people in the area and you're not able to get a hold of them via cell phone, and again, we're asking that you stay home, they say if you really are concerned about your family members, go ahead and call 911. And then what's going to happen is you let them know the address, let them know the person, and they will actually go out and check because right now they were doing it, of course, when we had more sunlight now, pitch black darkness, but it doesn't change the fact that first responders are working 
working to make sure that everyone is safe. The good news is when I spoke with the battalion chief earlier today, he did say zero injuries were reported because ProMedica is right next to an apartment building where everyone was safe and accounted for. I'll continue to try and work on updates. Again, folks, keep it off the roadways. Be safe. Try and do as much as you can. And if you can, just stay inside for now. And of course, for now, here in Washington Township, I'm going to send it back to you, Dan, in the studio. Tatiana, thank you. Yeah, you know, we're all curious to see this storm damage, but let's just wait till tomorrow morning after first responders make sure everything is cleared up, including the roads as well. Now let's get to Chase Bachman, who's in Oregon. Now, Chase, the storm moved across Otto River and started doing a lot of damage along the lakefront. What can you tell us about the damage you've seen tonight? Well, Dan, we've seen plenty of damage in the way of downed trees, a few downed power lines. You can actually look behind me. You can see some of those downed branches right there. It's not the best view, but you can kind of see some of those downed branches right next to those power lines. Fortunately, those are not down right now, but you can see down me. I'm going to turn the other way. You can see over my shoulder. You can see those are electric crews down there right now trying to get those telephone lines, those lines back up. Fortunately, it's just been a bunch of down trees, down power lines, down telephone lines. Thankfully, though, nobody's been hurt as far as what we've gathered walking around the neighborhood here. We've talked to plenty of neighbors. They said they've seen some roof damage, but fortunately, nobody's been hurt. Far from it. So we went door to door talking to people. We spoke with one woman whose garage roof was actually damaged by the storm. She says she's built her roof in the last five weeks or so, and she was able to uh, get it repaired and everything just in time for it to be damaged by this storm. So she says she spent more than $3,000 trying to get that roof repaired, and now now she's going to have to do it all over again. That roof was totaled. This woman actually said she lived in Florida for a number of years. She survived Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane Charlie, some powerful Category 5 hurricanes. And now here she is back up in Ohio, a storm with a lot of wind, hail, as we've seen that touchdown there, tornado, and now it damaged her roof. And unfortunately, she's been a victim now of this storm in Ohio, where she was able to escape unharmed in those hurricanes down in Florida. So unfortunately, that's what we've seen here. The extent of the damage, a lot of roof damage, people's homes, some windows broken, uh, some minor structural damage to some houses here. But fortunately, no reports of anyone being seriously injured. So uh, we encourage people to please stay in their home and exercise caution when being out. We've seen a few people out here uh, riding their bikes, actually, but they're not really many street lights along Bay Shore Road. It's pretty dark along this area, but we encourage people to exercise exercise caution. Reporting live in Oregon, Chase Bachman, WTOL 11 on Fox 36. Dan. Chase, thank you. Now, breaking news from the Ohio Turnpike right now, there's a travel advisory. Due to down power lines caused by the storm at milepost 94, the turnpike is closed in the westbound direction. Westbound travelers can exit at Toll Plaza 110, that is Sandusky Bellevue, or Toll Plaza 118, that is Sandusky Norwalk.